Hello, everybody. So we're going to start a new series here. Um, this isn't something... I know I had heard of this game a while back, but I had not really given it a lot of energy or thought because at the time I was just playing a lot of other stuff that was a little bit more action-oriented. This is really a hard back to game I really deeply love. It's Baldur's Gate. And uh, same folks that made that made this. So I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit here. We'll get set up. It's going to be a little too loud. There we go. So, Baldur's Gate, if you've never heard of that, it was a game in the 90s that was sort of isometric, look down, kind of Diablo feel to it. The difference is it's very story oriented. I think it'd be fun to play something like that again. And plus, the people that made that game, they're the ones that made this. So, they made it through a Kickstarter fund. I believe they got about $4 million to raise that, probably from dudes like me that really love and adore Baldur's Gate in that series. Uh, like I said, if you've never heard of that game or never never played something like this, it's basically what you're going to experience is playing as um, usually a main character, but you have other party members. And so what we're going to do is hopefully pick up NPCs and you, know, you have to make moral and ethical choices about what you want to do as you go through the world. That is about all I know about this game, and I've consciously not try to learn too much because what got me to pick this up and to start playing it is there's a few DLC, DLC that are attached to it now and so I was interested because people started talking about how much they really liked the original game meaning this one which only came out I believe in 2015 yeah no it's not really that old of a game I remember it's only probably couple months old at this point anyways let's go ahead and get started i'm gonna try to not read too much about the game or look ahead too much and just sort of experience this alongside you even though this game's been out for a little while now let's just do normal <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> if you've never played these before, God, there used to be a download screen. Grope blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Cool. All right. Feels very D and D esque, like we're being set up. All right. Okay. Think we're gonna make a character here. Wow. What the heck? All right. I can't really jump around. It looks like at this point. So we'll just pick something. I I'm kind of struggling with whether we want to read all the details here about the differences, but. Let's just see what we get here. Okay, so there's different races. <laughs> Amuda. All right, we'll say that. Amua. I know one thing that's different about this uh, from the little bit I gathered, reading a little bit to get piquing my interest in this, is that this world has its own lore. It's not like Dungeons and Dragons or the Boulder's Gate universe or anything like that. Orlin is an example. I have no idea what these things are. They're the smallest of the Kith races. Kiss Kith must be the world we're in. But many cultures don't consider them civilized at all. Okay, so they look kind of... I don't know. Maybe a roguey type thing? Looks like they get you get different stats too. Which, to be honest... Oh, okay, cool. I was going to say, I don't know what resolve is. <laughs> it's her internal drive. Alright, so instead of me staring at this... Endlessly trying to like mid-max something... 
I'll pick something I think looks kind of aesthetically. This is crazy looking. What is this? Godlike children of Kith. Okay. All right. So they, for a second, I thought literally it was going to be like an OP class, but it looks like it's just a couple of stats. So this might be a little generic. What's next? Oh, Jesus. There's like subsets. <laughs> this is incredible. There's that much like customization you can do. All right. I won't get hung up on this too long just because I know you can pick up NPCs and stuff like that. Kind of like Baldur's Gate, you would get these people you would meet along the story. Um, so we'll just assume we'll pick up pieces that might fit in well. So we'll just pick kind of a, maybe a fighter type. We aren't even in a class yet, which is crazy. Let's see, human, resolve and might. Yeah, we'll pick something. I. I assume this is pretty much generic. Fighting spirit savannah. I I don't really want the ginger. <laughs> Look, I'll go with this. So generic, but eh. All right, so here we go. Here's class. Wow, there's a lot of classes. Barbarian, I assume, is just a barbarian. There's a wall of text here. I'm going to pause and read. Oh, okay, this is helpful. So it's kind of giving us an idea here. It looks like that endurance must be their health or short-term survivability damage. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, okay. So when a character's endurance reaches zero, he or she is knocked out. A knockout. Okay, so it must be like a combat-related thing. So not necessarily just health, but I guess I could have known that right here. Health is right below it. Do, do, do. Accuracy. All right. So I do want to play something like that this guy looks fucking crazy though <laughs> uh what is next oh my god there's even more like subset abilities this is this is amazing all right cancer what is this he looks very templarish uh they have okay let me start at the top here yeah i said i wasn't going to get hooked into this this way like meaning like read everything or just character creation but i feel like i need to all right, so they're magic users. Maybe they're, like a, maybe they're like a bard. All chanters continuously speak chants. Okay, so yeah, cipher. <laughs> These outfits starter outfits crack me up. I like the rope here. <laughs> um, mind hunters. Okay, they're still found in the east. Okay, so their powers. They directly target allies and enemies with. Powerful soul focused effects. So maybe if you've ever heard of scions, like they're psychic. Yeah, a person's soul and psyche. So there's like scions. That's interesting. Let's see what kind of. Wow, they have lots of powers. That's cool. Amplified field. We won't go through all these, but it looks like they have. They're clearly a spellcaster type. Druids. They look a little silly. <laughs> nice. Nice little shield bear buddy uh let's see they yeah they too have so they must have spirit forms and things like that that's that's interesting um not really what i would imagine a human druid to look like but it's okay fighter monk i assume we're gonna get an npc that's a fighter so maybe i'll do something like paladin i always like clerics when i played D D. I i know some of the first classes i really hovered towards were uh cleric types because i liked somebody that could actually get in the front line and kind of support people and stuff like that a priest i assume is just a straight up healer i guess i shouldn't assume a paladin does something similar bonuses they have inherent bonuses to all their defenses or of course they came the value of their bonus is shift based on the reputation to gain that might be an interesting way to play this as part of the story is kind of suggesting idea that maybe they have to play it in a certain way i don't know if you have alignments in here or not but it'd be interesting definitely going to be all up in people's faces rangers i've played that in the past like i know my main playthrough of boulder's gate i was a ranger which was okay felt a little odd at the end of the game rouge eh, nah. wizard i guess it will up. So I'm kind of torn between either doing a paladin, which I'm not real. Eh, I'm not really feeling it for some reason. 
Cantor, I guess, could be something like that. Let's just do Barbarian. It's going to be probably pretty straightforward. Run and smash people in the face. Alright, let's see. Next. So I got to pick a spell here. Frenzy. Probably just like a rage thing. While they're in Frenzy, their endurance and health are concealed. I don't know why that would be good, but effects they have plus one to a lot of stuff a ton of attack speed but their deflection of their health and endurance is concealed okay uh what is this it's a barbaric yell it's an aoe it frightens people that would be cool i kind of like that idea just because it'd be cool to have sort of a supporty element to it so it looks like we definitely got to get up in the faces of people and it's going to debuff them to some extent all right, so we're picking stats here. What the hell do these stars mean? Uh, get a hint? Maybe? Oh, highly recommended for Barbarian. So maybe that's, let's just see here. There's a difference. Yeah, so these, these must mean yellow stars are like putting more points into these. Silver, yeah, definitely pay some attention but not overwhelming the rest are sort of meh so with 15 points to play with wow i wonder what the scale is if is it the, like so no 18 was ideal in dnd &D. i wonder if it's the same type of scale we'll just start out and put two in each of those one in these see how many we have left we have nine um let's just put one more in each and then the remaining we'll put like three here Two in Constitution. Call it a day. Not think too much. Oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. Culture. Uh, oh, so it gives like a benefit to one of your stats. Okay, so we can, without getting too overly crazy about it, maybe what we'll do is we'll just look for something that's. Oh, it changes your outfit too. That's kind of neat. Seems a little weird. Huh. Alright, Constitution. Where's one with might? The Living Lands. Alright. Perception. Kind of like the look at that. That's kind of a cool look. But, since we're trying to tie it to something that's relevant to our stats, we might want to do something like this. The Living Lands is a mountainous region. Eh, I like that idea. The Northern Island, renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable. Its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. One thing about this series I do know for a fact is there's going to be a lot of reading. So if my voice bothers you, I'm really sorry. Hopefully some of the voiceover stuff will kick in. That's one of the reasons. Another thing I found out was I want to pick up some of the NPCs in the game because you can make your own apparently, which is kind of cool. People have, if you've ever seen Angry Joe's video review of this, he makes uh, other Joe in the game, which is hilarious. But apparently you can't have them to have special voice and behaviors and things like that so that's why i'm going to stick to just the folks you can kind of pick up in the game because it'll be interesting to kind of have dialogue amongst the npcs and things like that so less of me and more of them so living lands are home to an assortment of races this is fine it seems pretty generic which is kind of what we're going for next call background okay these look like secondary stats stealth Mechanics, Hunter, Stealth Survival, <laughs> not knowing what's what, I assume Athletics and Survival and Lore might be cool, it's, it's either, oh, let's do Explore, make it seem like kind of an adventure, Ooh, hello, lots of portraits, no, alright, we won't spend too much time here, we'll just look for somebody that <laughs> looks like it's amazing. Ooh, look, that looks like kind of a barbarian type. That's really cool looking. So I assume we're gonna. Oh, that's right up my alley. Very Conan. So 35. Oh, these are neat. Uh, this is certainly a rush of nostalgia for me. Wow, oh, those are really neat looking. <laughs> it's like Santa Claus. <laughs> We'll go back to Conan. We'll just pick him real quick and we'll move on. We won't get lost in this. I can see how you could literally spend hours sitting here picking your character, though. That's quite the step up from Beard 1 to 2 there. 
Oh, it's, it's gotta have some facial hair. He's a freaking barbarian. I want it to manicured. That just looks. Yeah, let's play with the head a little bit. That these couple are pretty terrible hairstyles. <laughs> All right, that's that's a little better. Thirteen here. Why do they always have to stick a mohawk in there? Seems like it's such a necessity nowadays. Um, that looks good. Goodish. Not like this, but goodish. Oh my god, here's a voice. Huh? I'm flattered. Bring them down. I have to do They'll that. never know I'm here. Well, watch and learn. They won't see me coming. Hmm. We want that to be our dude's voice the whole game. Yeah? Follow me. Stand together! Keeping quiet. Hey there. <sighs> Let's do Stoic. Follow me. Alright, since our guy kind of looks like Conan, we'll just make him freaking Conan. As the caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and saggy jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks over you over. You're supposed to be sick. You look pretty healthy. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. <laughs> There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you oh. don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. So do we have, like, beetle gonorrhea? What the hell? <laughs> There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a springberry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. All right, so he's talking to an assistant now, so... Sparful must be the assistant, nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Okay, so we can actually talk now. Um, do we just we get straight to finding berries? Or do the obvious thing, go explore the ruins? <laughs> uh, let's just leave. Let's just go get the berries Hold on. move on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. So he scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman, a rat, who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without a blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. All right, he casts a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. All right, well, we'll call it for this first episode here. We'll go on our adventure next. Hope you guys are interested in this game. This looks like a lot of fun to me. Talk to you shortly. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.